got a treat today, training with Tanya Chartrand. Tanya, Tanya's a week out from uh, the Savannah Pro. Yep. Three weeks out from the Arnold Classic in the UK. So, Tanya, I guess we met, I don't know, three years ago? Something like that, yeah. We met yeah. here. We met here. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. here. The, the Mecca of the North. And, yeah. Um, yeah, so Tanya was in figure, but I'll let you tell the story. Uh, well, I started as a figure pro. I turned pro in 2015 and competed in figure until, I guess, what was it, 2020? Made the switch to women's physique, won my first women's physique show, went to the Olympia, two-time Olympian now, and um, yeah, excited for this season, see how it goes. Anyway. Into bodybuilding? Oh god, well, I had a ton of like health issues. Almost died a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad. Uh, my life came kind of crashing down. Got depressed, got fat, decided one day that I had enough, enough was enough. Ended up at the gym and that's the end of the story. I was like 37 years old, so 10 years ago. 47 now. And when did you, so when was your very first competition? My very first competition was 2015. Okay. I actually did one bikini show in 2015. Okay. And then so I was told- you turned pro like almost right away. Yeah, I did. I did, um, back then the qualification system was you needed to win like a, a qualifier, go to BCs and then go to nationals. So I basically placed third in my qualifier, placed second in BCs. And then when I went to nationals, I won first place in overall. Awesome. Got my pro card in figure. Yeah. And Tanya's got the beautiful turnaround. Tanya's got the beautiful structure with the wide shoulders and little tiny waist <laughs> and the big legs. And, and, uh, and so when you jumped into physique, yeah. um, was it just were, was the, were the judges suggesting you try another division, or was it your choice? No, actually, I went to Tampa and I placed like nearly dead last in figure, and I was like, "What's wrong with me?" I went home and I cried myself, you know, to. Like what happened? Yeah. I was placing top 10 the year before. So I had to really look at myself and look at the pictures. And my coach at the time was like, I've been telling you, you need to do women's physique. So there was a women's physique show in three weeks. And I was like, okay, let's do a quick turnaround. Let's not tell anybody. Let's put it under wraps, put the contract in. So I learned a routine in the basement. It was in the middle of COVID. Flew to Shreveport, Louisiana. Won first place in masters, won first place in the open category and got my ticket to the O at my first uh, women's first physique women's show. Physique Very first. Amazing. So yeah, I, I finally like... It was a good choice meant yeah, to be. Yeah, and I just love women's physique now. I love the expression of the body. I love to be able to build the muscle and the body that I want to build. Yeah. I, was, I felt like I was in a boxing figure, like trying to hold back on everything that I was doing for so long. So how somebody's been in the sport for so long and like people forget about that. People forget about who pioneers the sport and like they, they lose respect for that. It's all about like gym sharky shit now. And like, you know, who <laughs> can, who, like, you know what I mean? It's, this is like, the you're best, where it came from. It, you're where the bodybuilding came from and you're still here like at your age. The dinosaur. Fini yeah, but you're finishing first in shows yeah. and like you just continuously get better. It's fucking epic. I love it. Like the best, everything about it. That's the best part it. of this sport is that the ability to continually get better so and we're our own I mean there's judges feedback in that but we know ourselves when what we want to try and achieve and when you can actually see like your your whole shape change it's yeah pretty, pretty it's pretty amazing, amazing right like yeah. in the off season you get stuck in this mentality of like I'm so big if I'm changing everything yeah. is like Bleh. well the and one then you when showed you... me of your back like year over year at the same weight yeah it's like a different Amazing. It's so crazy how you can change your structure so much and not recognize it until you're actually ready for the next show yeah. and then you're like, wow, there it is. You know, yeah. it's so rewarding just to see all the hard work that you put in actually pays off.
as you progress in the sport, especially as a pro, you're an Olympian now, uh, what aspects do you find you've got to develop more each year as you, as you elevate your own level? It's more, I think, mental than anything and preparing yourself for what's essentially ahead systematically. So you can come into the gym every day and put in the work because that's what we do, that's what we love. But outside of that, you really have to put yourself in this mental place um, and constantly be reminding yourself of why you're doing it, how you stay on track, especially like going the week into the show. It's all about like rest and recovery. A lot of people think that going into a show, you gotta push that extra mile just to make it there, but you've already done the work. If you're ready for the show, you've already done the work. Now is the time to get your rest in, to make sure that you're mentally there, to make sure that you're prepared for whatever's coming on the stage, like how you're gonna present yourself. Um, keeping yourself stress-free, getting in, you know, all of the downtime that you can, finding clarity in your mind. Um, there's just so much outside of actually like being in the gym and pushing hard that you need to prepare yourself for going into any show. Um, I think staying in your lane. Staying in your lane, you know, staying off of social media. So many people get caught up, like, Distracted. who's competing, what are they looking like. If you really stay focused on your goal and being the best that you can be and leaving all of the other distractions out there, you're going to come in better. Um, I think people tend to get over anxious. If you've done the work, there's no need to be over anxious. You're just going in prepared. You're going in um, keeping positive trying to stay as positive as you can be. I mean, whatever's gonna happen on the stage is gonna happen. We can't prevent that, um, the outcome. There might be somebody that shows up that's better than you, and that's okay, you have to deal with that. But how do you mentally prepare yourself for that? And how do you deal with like those emotions going into the stage? How do you suppress them? How do you like, um, I mean, you don't necessarily have to suppress them, but like, how do you deal with them in a positive way so that you don't, raise your cortisol and screw yeah. things up in the last week. You know what I mean? There's just so many different. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. That wraps up today. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed meeting Tanya Chartrand, a good friend of mine. Um, looking forward to having some other great, strong women on the, pod, on the, on the uh, channel soon. Uh, please comment below if you liked what you saw. And uh, like and subscribe. Bye.